I'm Vinny D'Angelo. This is The Valley Chef, where we feature families, people, and products of California's great Central Valley. Hi, I'm Vinny D'Angelo. I graduated the Culinary Institute in New York, where I grew up. And now, years later, I'm in Merced, California. Merced's located in the great California Central Valley, uh, one of the most prominent farming areas on the West Coast. I've been a restaurant here, a restaurateur for over 20 years, and I've created a lot of great relationships with all the growers of the valley. And what I'd like to do with the Valley Chef program is highlight and showcase these people, their families, their family history, generations of farming secrets, right here in the Central Valley. Hi, I'm Vinny D'Angelo, the Valley Chef. Call me on an adventure to meet the people and businesses of the great California Central Valley. Come with us as we venture out to the farmlands of La Grande, California, where we meet with the Marchini family and capture the experience of their fig operation. Then we head to Madeira and visit our friends at Crew Winery and taste their award-winning wine. Located in the farming community of La Grande, California, is four generations of the Marchini farming family. Marchini Farms has become one of the largest exporters of radicchio and home of one of the most efficient fig operations in the West Coast Central San Marquin Valley. Showed up, the Valley Chef himself. Hey. 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 Hi, I'm Vinny D'Angelo, the Valley Chef. I'm here with the Marchini family at their fig operation here in La Grande. Nine months out of the year, this facility is used for radicchio. And during the summer months, for three months, we see Joe Marchini's fig production. Joe, tell us about the challenges of growing figs. Challenging growing figs, or oh, I got I got grandchildren, son and grandchildren to help us out. We want this fig operation. Uh, I think about uh, almost 20 years ago. Next door, on a fig branch, and we brought in the figs into with the radicchio. And we made this plant work for both things, for uh, our radicchio and pigs. And we have a cooling system outside that can handle both. And you need cooling, pre-cooling, and, and storage here to keep them before they get loaded up to go all over the world. The pigs travel in this country, Canada, radicchio, go to Korea, Japan, every place else. Valley Chef. I'm here with Joe Marchini out of his A-Rod Ranch out here in Merced. Get this started, Vinny. Here we go, Vinny. Come on, come on. Put him in there, Vinny. This is an Italian. Go ahead, Vinny. You're doing great. You're missing him, man. You're doing a good job. <laughs> You're doing a good job, Vinny. Italian made radicchio planting machine. Here with Joe Marchini. You're doing a great job. You're missing every one on one. So you got to get a little faster, Vinny. <laughs> You're doing a good job, though, Vinny. Keep it up. I think I'm going to hire you, Vinny. That's the radicchio plant. This is where it all starts with Joe Marchini. That is food safety right there. They make us do this. Prevent rats, the ra rats, uh, farmers to come in. This is all organic tomatoes. 100%. There's no no uh, chemicals of any kind. It's all uh, compost, sprays, all of the other things. Okay, here we are at the Marchini fig plant. Uh, Jeff Marchini, can you take us through the whole process 
a fix from the tree to the consumer. Depends on the varietals, but the main season is August and September is when you'll find a majority of your fresh figs and also the dry figs that are coming at that time. So for our operation, we produce about 170 acres of fresh figs. It takes us field labor for over a couple hundred people seven days a week to get them out of the field, to get them in this packing facility. And then we have another uh, 100 people in here that are packing figs in different configurations and my son Mark will go over that. But the fresh fig, once again, is very perishable. It's something we like to harvest, get it in a box, get it cooled, and get it on a truck, load it, and get it out of here. As Benny likes to say, the fig is a, is a perfect item to feature during the summertime. And, and I think our customers realize that whether it's a retail account, wholesale account, restaurants, they're always looking for something new to introduce when there's not, you know, there's something, there's not really anything else new to introduce. So the fig comes off like main season, like in, in August. To, to sell the figs, we, we'll do a tray pack or a clamshell pack. And uh, the clamshells are all retail packs. So it's consumer focused. Um, you know, our, we do about 85% all, all the figs go to retail markets. And then about 15% of the rest will go to, uh, to uh, restaurants. Earlier today, we watched some radicchio plants being put into the ground. Uh, very young plants. Uh, Nick, can you tell us what happens from there? How long before they're in market? Yeah, Vinny, I can. So what you saw today was radicchio being planted in its most natural state. To me, today, in August, if you go back to the old country in Italy, this is radicchio in its natural state. This is when it needs to be planted. We do have a year-round supply of radicchio. And we do that through different varieties or, or whatnot. But if you go back to the life of chicory, chicories are meant to be planted in the hot summer days, going into short days, cool times. And this is when the flavor of the radicchio comes out the most. radicchio has been called the winter flower at times because it's one of the only vegetables that likes to be harvested after being beaten down with frost, rain, and fog. If you go back to Italy, this is when they do plant their radicchio. This is in its natural state, like I said. So Francesca, tell us how radicchio gets out into the world. How far can we can you distribute radicchio? Can we distribute? Yeah, well, we ship radicchio all over the world. We have our, you know, our neighboring people who love it, like Canada. But then we also either ship it by plane or by boat, because it can go by boat, to Japan and Korea, and we ship it China, I mean, you name it, we ship it there. And that's probably the main reason why we, or Joe's Radicchio is the original Radicchio girl in the US. And he is the biggest Radicchio girl. Joe, the king of Radicchio, Joe Marchini and his family. I'm here with the Marchini family, four generations of farming. I want to thank Joe and all his grandkids and kids to allowing us to come out here and film and give us a greater and deeper knowledge of everything that's going on in the farming industry as they are the elite farmers of the Central Valley. Thank you, Joe. Hi, I'm Vinny D'Angelo, the Valley Chef. I'm here at Crew Wine Company in Madeira, California. We're, in there we're gonna enter into the tasting room where we're gonna meet my good friend, and winemaker extraordinaire Ken Post. Let's head in, taste some world-class, award-winning wines made right here in Madeira, California. Ken's inside, let's go meet him. Vini, Paisano, hey. you're just in time. Hey. Let's enjoy some vino. Hey. All right, Ken. Come on in. Crew Winery in Madeira, California. This is their tasting room. Um, Let's go check it out. Let's go see what's going on. It's open 11 to 5 every day. Let's go see what we can taste. Let's see what we can get in here and find out what's going on, Vinny. Welcome to my office. Okay, Vinny. This is the largest accolade that we have ever received. This is the one that took Best of Show Red, San Francisco International Wine Competition, 2,500 wine, red wines 
Tasted Blind. This is the one that took best of show, San Francisco International. Let's make sure those judges know what they're talking about, Vinny. Let me get that right. You won in San Francisco? San Francisco, the largest, most prestigious wine competition in the United States, the San Francisco International Wine Competition, Crew Wine Company in the Central Valley here, took best of show red. Doesn't matter where they came from, anywhere in the world, we beat them all. Congratulations, Ken. Let's give it a taste. Those judges know what they're talking about. They know about. what they're talking about. Man, that's wow. a nice wine. The best of show in San Francisco wine competition right here at Crew Winery with the winemaker extraordinaire, Ken Post. So these grapes, these came in last Friday. This is Santa Maria Pinot, Pinot Noir. It's the 667 clone. And uh, this year, our 2014 Pinot Noir took the best of show. These are the components of the same wine that we made that last time. And there's three components. So there's uh, Pinot Noir 667 clone, there's some 115 clone, and 828. These skins you can see are already bleached out. Cameron, you want to push, punch this down and you'll see how the liquid's in there and, and how far it's pushing up. See how it's lifted completely up out of the liquid. And we need to get those grapes back down into the liquid as you're producing this heat and alcohol. It's a great solvent and it pulls all the phenolics, all the coloring and flavoring out of that, those skins. And that's how you develop color. And it's doing it, man, it smells, it's just, this is what puts a smile on a winemaker's face for sure. Looks like another award-winning wine here for Ken Posted Crew, who took double gold recently in San Francisco. And right here, we're looking at a brand new French oak wine barrel. And there's some markings on the barrel, and a lot of people don't know what that means. Ken, can you tell us what that means, what these markings mean? The A right here stands for the Allier Forest, M plus stands for medium plus to uh, toast. So just like sugar, when you cook sugar to different temperatures, it has different flavors. As you toast the barrel, it has different flavors because the, the, the sugars in the wood get toasted and it creates different flavors. 3Y, that means the staves were air dried for three years before it was assembled. 16, it's a 2016 barrel, 46. That's just a number so we know which vessel it is and we can tell the life of this. Thanks, Ken. That was great information about the barrel and how to read a barrel. I'm sure a lot of people weren't aware of that. I see a room full of barrels here, all kinds of barrels, different dates. Can, can we take a look at those and it, give us a little information about these? Exactly. These barrels right now are all empty. You can see some 2011, some 12s. 13s and on up to the brand new barrels 2016. Also over to the side we have the, the white barrels that are marked with the W. It's marked with a green W and those are white wine barrels. We don't ever want to put your white wine into a red barrel. Later these can be converted over to red wine barrels which works very good but uh, during the life if it's going to be a white wine you don't want to make rosé out of it by putting it into a red barrel. A technique I haven't tried deliberately, but uh, uh, we'll try to keep away from that mistake there. I'm holding this unusual looking tool here, but I understand that all winemakers need one. Ken, you want to explain to us what and well, how you use this thing? Th this has the, a very appropriate name to it. This is called a wine thief. And uh, I don't know if that's because we're thieving <laughs> wine from the barrels, uh, but this is how we access the barrels to get samples and see how things are progressing there. And thus came the name Wine Thief. And this is what the winemakers use to test their wines to see what state they're at, what stage? That's the excuse we use. Yeah. <laughs> It's a good way to get a glass of wine. 
Nothing like sampling out of the barrel. Nothing like a good old wine thief. So we're tasting the Merlot. What year is this? This is 2015 Merlot from Paso Robles. Paso Robles Merlot. Wow, it tastes That's like doing a, good. Tastes like another award-winning wine, gonna be coming out real soon here from Crew. Vinny, I got something here I want to share with you. You've been following us with the wines from beginning. You've been tasting this wine in the barrel. This is the 2015 Santa Maria Chardonnay. You can see it doesn't have a label on it yet. That won't be on until probably a week from now. But this oh, wine. What an aroma. Oh. Hot on. Wow. This wine, out of it, there were only eight barrels made of this wine. Wow. And with your love of this wine, from the very beginning, you asked if you could have a barrel. You're going to have the exclusivity of this wine in the wholesale market. Wow, thank you, Ken. Wow, you heard that. You want to taste one of the best Chardonnays ever. We'll have a own barrel at Bella Luna Bistro in Merced. Thank you, Ken. This is absolutely delish. Thank you, Ken Post, for showing us behind the scenes of all about winemaking, giving us a history, and sharing your award-winning wines with us. Catch us again on the Valley Chef. Thank you. Today's featured dish is the grilled fig crostini appetizer made with marquini figs, sliced ripe tomatoes, goat cheese, and basil, then all drizzled with extra virgin olive oil and balsamic. This is Vinny D'Angelo. Welcome to the Valley Chef. Simple ingredients prepared simply. So anyways, what we're gonna do here is, is just take these figs, just cut off the stems. You can see the inside, that red color. What we're gonna do is we're gonna caramelize the figs because caramelization means flavor in cooking. We're gonna caramelize the sugars in the fig, put a little bit of color on them, and we're gonna get great flavor. So what we're going to do is start with a little uh, olive oil. We're going to hit the figs with a little black pepper. And all we're going to do is put these figs in the plate in the pan and get some color on them. Okay, while the figs are getting some color, this is a real simple dish. Then we're gonna take our vine-ripe tomatoes. When you cut into a tomato and there's no space, and the weight, of, if you could feel this, this probably weighs about you know, three quarters of a pound, one tomato. It's full of water, it's full of juice, it's full of flavor. And you can see the tomato, what it looks like. When you cut into a tomato and there's spaces in there and a lot of seeds and everything, it's a different thing altogether. These are vine ripened tomatoes. They're real hard to come by, only at a certain time of the year. So now we have some beautiful tomatoes. And what I'm making right now is gonna be coming out of the kitchen so everybody can try it. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take some goat cheese. We're just gonna crumble some goat cheese over the tomatoes. Then we're gonna take some fresh basil off my live basil plant. We're gonna make a basil chiffonade, it's called. Okay, so now we have the, the sweet tomatoes and the grilled figs the goat cheese, the basil, 
And the way we're going to finish it was it extra virgin olive oil and some balsamic vinegar. Put a little drop of vinegar on each fig. Then we take some of our focaccia bread and we toasted it. And this, everybody, is the grilled fig crostini platter that we serve at Bella Luna. And the figs are coming around right now for you to try. This is available at Bella Luna, but if you can see how easy it is to make. Okay? For years, for years, everybody asked me, what do you do to those figs? So I figured, I declassified the fig recipe. I'm gonna show everybody what it is. That's how simple it is. But you gotta have great figs. Marquini figs, marquini tomatoes, some fresh bread, and you're right there. We're really gonna have a good time tonight. So everybody, hit it! What a food was phenomenal. Just great dinner. Oh my gosh, what a presentation. This is top-notch stuff from Merced, California. Awesome food, awesome company, awesome chef. What else can you say? Oh, it was excellent. Vinny, over the top again. Um, it was great. Um, uh, just from like the chef experience and the wine tasting and then the appetizers and then the dinner. Surprise me again. I, I, I mean, I mean, Merced is lucky to have Vinny. The way he can pair what the farmers grow locally is just incredible. Vinny is a star. We're going to see Vinny on TV. And good luck, Vinny. Happy. Have a great year. Hi, I'm Vinny D'Angelo. Thank you for joining us on this episode of The Valley Chef. Until next time, ciao, baby.